because if he can't get himself unstuck, I don't know what we do. This week on Bondi Vet. Funnel webs kill, and people know that, so it's a little bit terrifying when you've got one in your backyard, let alone in your house. I've done plenty of dentals on cats, but never on a really, really big cat with really, really big teeth. So it's gonna be a really, really big challenge. Three, two, two, one. Good boys. In. Get that cord off. Head up. Number five. Ever since Africa, I've just been itching for a chance to go up close to big cats again. So today, one more way to Mogo Zoo to see a Sumatran tiger with a really painful problem. Chris is a regular visitor to the Mogo Zoo, located four hours south of Sydney. Hey Sal, how are hey, you? Hey Chris, how are you going, hey? It's good. Sally's called me in because she has a Sumatran tiger with a toothache. It's a problem that's not going to be easily fixed. Come on down, Chris. Hey there, come on. The keepers were feeding her one evening and noticed that she was very tentative about um, chewing on a particular side and uh, got her to open her mouth and there, bingo, fractured straight through. Hey, can you yes. open it up and say ah? The problem with Saraya's tooth is that when it's cracked through, it's exposed the pulp of the tooth, but also the nerve. So any time anything touches that tooth, it'd be excruciating for Saraya. So what she needs is two words that send a shiver down in one spine, a root canal. I've done plenty of dentals on cats, but never on a really, really big cat with really, really big teeth. So it's gonna be a really, really big challenge. Not you today. Your teeth, your teeth are perfect. Look at them. They are. At the Sorry, Mogo Zoo, really it's time for Soraya's root canal surgery. Lock her in. The anxious mother has been separated from her cubs and now needs to be anaesthetised by resident vet Sam Young. So she obviously knows what's about to happen. Yes. She's sensing that. When it comes to knocking them down and things like that, I always get very nervous. There is always risks associated with it. I don't like to think that, oh no, it might be the last time we see you. Yep, yep. Now that we know the dart's actually hit her, it's gone in, it's injected the anaesthetic, we now have to stand back and just make sure she goes down, but also that she goes down deep enough that we can get in there. Ready? Yep. Tigers are like people in one way. They don't go to the dentist willingly, so we have to bring the dentist to Soraya, and that's what we've done today. A whole lot of equipment, a whole lot of expertise, a lot of challenges along the way, and I don't know, you've got to be nervous. <laughs> you look around the room and there are a lot of serious faces because if anything can go wrong, it's going to go wrong right now. With Soraya now sedated and restrained, the extent of the Sumatran tiger's tooth fracture is finally revealed. So she's got crown fracture, so that's very, very painful, very sore. Chris has invited Sash dental surgeon Nadine Fiani to perform the delicate operation. Her canal is a spectacular seven centimetres. That's huge. The so seven centimetres of tooth Beneath that fracture. <laughs> Just below the fracture, yeah. Crazy stuff. Nice. What we'll be doing is going inside the tooth itself with some files and basically scraping the inside out, getting all that nasty muck, the infection, all out of there. All this black material you're seeing coming out is the infected part, so you can see that really the damage you see on the surface is nothing compared to what's actually brewing underneath, and what's brewing is, is quite a serious infection. That's it. Much less black muck coming out now, so we're, we're winning. But Soraya has now been on the operating table for more than an hour. As every minute goes by, the risk to the Sumatran tiger is dramatically increasing. She's breathing a bit more rapidly than lions and tigers normally do and uh, a little bit more erratically than I would like, so I'm just keeping a very close eye on her. So I'll keep an eye on the heart rate. I think 
think she's a little bit deeper. At Mogo Zoo, the surgical team is under pressure to complete Soraya's crucial root canal operation. Time under anaesthesia is vital for these guys, so the shorter that we can keep her under, the better it is for her and the safer as well. What we want to do is make sure we get that right down to the bottom. The purpose of this mixture here is to push in there and just like putty to fill in that gap. And that really gives the tooth strength but also prevents any infection from occurring from here. It's actually going all right right now, but you just have to remember you can't rush this sort of thing. Each step takes a certain amount of time and rush those steps and it just won't work out. After two hours, Nadine is finally happy with the result. You are home and dry. My job is done. It is, it is a relief. I feel like everything went very well. With the operation over, Chris has a small window of time to admire the formidable Soraya. Just the size of her paws and the size of these nails here. Just her forearms and her, her triceps and her arms there. I mean, she's a small tiger, but you look at that. Bodybuilder would be happy with that sort of arm. It's amazing. OK, so can we start yeah. moving? Chris, there's, would you like to turn it. her up to five? You can just yep. get those out for you, though. Okay. It was only when I looked around the group that I realised just how much of a team effort it was. Everyone did their job and did it well. And thankfully, Soraya got through it. Yes. She's awesome. Soraya's root canal operation has been a success, but now the big cat has to be moved back to her den. Just move her back towards the table a bit. Still no reflex. the nerve-wracking time because if she in the process of waking up starts to swallow a tongue then you can't go in there and move it because she's awake enough to do something about you. It could all come unstuck right now. Here I am. How many minutes has it been now? 10 to 15? Yeah. Mm. At Mogo Zoo, everyone is waiting and hoping for Soraya to regain consciousness after her root canal surgery. Even after we've done so much, you just can't celebrate until she is totally awake, sitting up and looking alive because things can still go wrong right now. Here I am. Honestly, I'm really trying hard not to look at Sal's face because she is just riding this emotional wave because it's one of her babies. Here we go. Yeah, me. It's all right. It's okay, girl. It's all right. Soraya's going to be a little bit sleepy for the next few hours, but slowly but surely, all those little instincts of hers will kick back into action, and she'll be back with the cubs before she knows it. It's looking good, team. Yeah. Well done, everybody. Fantastic. Thank Thanks you very much. Yeah, no worries, thank you. Thank well you. done, Sam. Good to have you involved. And well done, you, huh? Thank you very much. Well. Thank you. <laughs> Number four. I'm excited about today. I'm on the other side of the country in Broome. I'm here to help out a good mate. He said to me, Tim, I've seen you move a few crocs before, but how about you come and help me with Bluey? At the Broome Wilderness Park, Big Bluey already knows something's up, and croc keeper Dave Tapper is anxiously waiting for Tim to arrive so they can start relocating the massive beast. Good morning, mate. Hey, Tim. How you going, mate? I'm good. That's good. How are you? Yeah, well. well. Big day? Yep, big day planned. Where is he? Uh, just up the way there. I've uh, got a couple of boys just keeping an eye on him at the moment. Let's go. Yep. Bluey will be one of the star attractions at the new park, 16 kilometres away. Bluey, there's a bit of a story. He was captured from the wild. He was eating horses on a cattle station. So, problem croc. And he's been here for about 15 years and he's very loved. He's a real character. But he's five metres, 500 kilos, maybe more. A huge team of helpers has been routed up for today's operation. This is a big move. We've got a big croc. Very dangerous, especially for us, but also for the croc. It needs to happen smooth. It's high alert 
and we need to be careful at every stage. All right, so everyone's ready? All right. All right, guys. Dave, Chris and I go into Bluey's yard and he's nowhere to be seen. Right, Pat. Bang! There's Bluey. He's out and he's right into position. Whoa! That first rope needs to go on now. We need to have our wits about us because a croc like this, make a mistake, you only get one chance. Whoa! In Broom, Killer Croc Bluey is putting up a fight. Jeez. Rightio, are you back on that, Tim? Yep. Pull back. Some of it. The massive right. beast is Tough using all his 500 yeah, kilos to resist efforts to get him out of his pond. He's gonna roll. Okay, just hold it there, keep the tension on. Let him roll. Perfect. Yeah. Keep a bit of slack, guys. Tim has been asked to help move the five metre monster to the new crocodile park. This is where it gets hard. Bluey's got the first rope on and he's thrashing about. All we can do is try and hold on, but he's way too strong for us. Right. Let him roll. A bit of slack. It's an epic struggle. Let him roll. The angry croc wants to retreat back into his pond. Hold up, boys. Not too much on him. Then suddenly, he starts heading straight for the fence. Just keep the pressure. Jeez. Bluey has the ropes on and he's doing big death rolls. And he hits the fence, bites it and rolls into it. He's that powerful. This is a problem because if he can't get himself unstuck, I don't know what we do. In the struggle to free himself, the giant croc is now also using up too much energy. Big crocs like this can build up lactic acid. That can kill them. That happens because they struggle and they, they stress out. Do you want us to give him a bit of slack for a sec? Yeah. Just a little yeah. bit, yeah. A little, little bit of slack on. The team is running out of time. They now have just precious seconds to try to release the agitated croc. This needs to be fast. If Bluey overheats, he'll die. Come on. There we go. There we go. In Broom, gigantic croc Bluey is gradually untangling himself from a perimeter fence. Rightio, pull away. The massive five metre croc is being relocated to a larger wildlife park. With a bit of encouragement, thankfully, Bluey unrolls himself and it's game on. OK, hold the tension on there. Yeah. We'll let him turn, eh? That's it. Perfect. I want to try and keep him off the fence, so give him a little bit of slack. A little bit more, a little bit more. Well, hold on, just hold your ground. Now it's all hands on deck. Keep that pressure on Bluey. There's a few of us working in and around him. If the guys don't keep the pressure on, he's gonna whack one of us. Okay, Pete, you got your advertise? Perfect. Finally, Bluey is subdued. The team needs to quickly tape up his lethal yeah. jaws before they inflict any damage. Once his jaws are restrained, then we take a little breath because he can't bite anymore. <laughs> Happy? Snap it off, mate, perfect. Now we've got the jaws secured, the main thing we've got to watch out for is when Bluey rolls or thrashes that tail about. It can break your leg, pop your knee, really easy. Put a couple of you on the tail, a couple grab the legs. Yes, give us a hand here on this one, mate. You got that one? Let's work on that one first. Fair enough. Bluey won't stay quiet for long, so Tim and the team need to keep moving. Crocodiles expend energy and they need a little bit of time to reboot. So by moving him quickly, we're hoping to avoid that point where he's able to build up fresh energy and become a problem. Righty -o. Ready? One, Grab two, hold. go, pull. That's it. Perfect. Turn him a bit. That went well. He bowled himself up in the fence for a minute, but he came right back out. Good capture. Okay, stop. Perfect. Now we need to move quick and get him to his new home before that lactic acid builds up because that can really hurt him. That went well, Dave. Yeah, so far, so good. Okay, fellas. Right in the middle there. Now, this is the bit that's really going to test your middle. Uh, like I said, he's a very heavy animal, so uh, lift safely, bend at the knees. 
In Broome, Big Bluey is about to put Tim and the team to the toughest test of them all. One, two, three. We a bit light up here. <laughs> the 500 kilo heavyweight is being moved to the truck that will take him to the new park site. Shuffle, shuffle, that's it. Even though we're all prepared and ready for the lift, it still caught everyone by surprise. The immense weight of Bluey is a real struggle. OK, and down. I'm glad we had a few extra people. <laughs> the road trip to Bluey's new home is just 16 kilometres, but every minute he stays restrained is critical. I'm sure he's stressing out. He's probably wondering what's going on. It's been a long time since he's had ropes on him and been captured, and our whole operation, of course, is to minimise that stress to him. Got a mattress for under his chest, just to stop the vibration. Now the crane lifts Bluey onto the truck, and we put some wet blankets on him and a shade structure, because we've got a 15-minute journey to Bluey's new home. We need to move fast. If Bluey overheats, he'll die. That's a confident croc. Yeah, exactly. No, it went pretty well. I was pretty happy. In Broome, Bluey is finally on his way to his new pond at the relocated Crocodile Park. Now he's heading home. Oh, I'm glad for that. The release? Well, oh, that could be a different story. Yep. Tim is desperate to get the 500 kilo croc back into the water, so unloading has to get underway as quickly as possible. Let's get him off. When we let Bluey go, we want to see that he's full of energy. If he's not, and he's lethargic, and he just sits there, that's an indication that he's exhausted. We want to see a firecracker. That means he's got plenty of energy, and this was a success. We'll point his head right at the water. The dangerous release is creating plenty of interest. We've all braced ourselves ready. We just need to get those ropes off quickly, safely, and get out of his way. Rightio, Tim, we're going to get cracking on this? Yep. OK. So his legs are free? Right. What's that tail? My stomach has butterflies. Dave is going to cut all the ropes, cut all the tape, some people will be on Bluey, and my job is last rope. I'll have the only rope that's holding his jaws shut, so when everything else is gone, I'll hold on tight, and hopefully it unwraps. Hold him. Whoop, whoop. Hold him, guys, hold him. This is where someone can get seriously hurt. All right, all right, clear off, get back. Back behind me, rocker. Bluey doesn't stick to the plan. As soon as he can feel freedom, whack, he's up. He's OK. Once he gets a look at that water, he should just walk straight in. It's pleasing to see Bluey have some sort of energy. We know then that he hasn't built up a great deal of lactic acid in his body. Here we go. Go on, big boy. Here you go. Bluey's finally in. It's been Woo. a big day. It's a real thrill, a real buzz to, to finally move him. He is a great crocodile, very dynamic. Uh, he, he's great on tour, and it'd be good to see him back on tour and, of course, pleasing the crowd. Well, he's happy, mate. Yeah, no, that went pretty well. I'm, I'm happy with that too. He was cheeky. Oh, yeah. Caught us a little unawares at the end there, but yeah. Yeah, still went well, though. What a day. A five-metre saltwater crocodile captured and successfully removed. That's a good day in my book. This week's number three. Dr. Peter Ritchie's day is already off to a busy start. Our day to day work here mainly involves wildlife animals to keep healthy animals healthy. So, who have we got here, Steve? Uh, this is little Alia, one of the orphan quokkas that came to us from Rottnest Island a few years ago. I love the zoo because it is a magical place. The work that is done here saves wildlife. Pretty excited to see Azuri. After his morning rounds, Peter's next patient is one of the zoo's latest additions. Azuri has come to us from another zoo. She's here to start our breeding program. These guys are vulnerable in the wild and it's really important that she breeds to contribute to the preservation of this species. The main reason Azuri has come into the clinic today is because she has a implant in her that is suppressing her sex hormones and stopping her from being able to breed. So we're going to remove her implant. This will allow her to, to breed uh, with males when we bring them to Pursley. Azuri has returned to her sleeping quarters. 
giving zoo vets the opportunity to anaesthetise her ahead of the operation. The most dangerous part with her anaesthetic procedure is when she's been darted and we're transporting her. Big cats are at risk of dying suddenly while under anaesthesia, so the team must work quickly. It's definitely a very big deal moving a 180 kilogram cat. Um, it requires eight people to carry her. She is a bit of a dead weight when she's asleep and anaesthetised, so that's 180 kilos that we're having to manoeuvre from her exhibit into a van and into our veterinary hospital. Three, two, one, left. It's an intense moment when we've got all those people in close proximity to a, a potentially lethal animal. Just watch her noggin. With Azuri the lioness now unconscious, she's transported to the Perth Zoo Clinic, where Peter and senior vet Simone are ready to take over. A bit nervous at the moment. We want to get things happening very quickly. Big cats hold risk under anaesthesia, and the longer she's under, the bigger the risks. That's it. Just watch your head, guys. Ready? Okay. OK, poles on the end of the van. It's going to be our only chance to get our hands on her and get up close and personal. Right, shall we start having a look at a few things, sure. Pete? Do you want to get catheter in? Or... I'm going to clip that right now. The team needs to remove Azuri's contraceptive implants without delay. With every minute critical, everyone is under pressure. Now we've got her on the table, we're going to start our procedures. We've got to work quickly. It is dangerous for her to be under anaesthetic for too long. Can we just move back a touch, guys? Yeah. Azuri must be intubated to monitor and control her breathing during surgery. Down a bit though, guys, because I'm four foot. I'm happy that's in. The team must now perform an examination and vital tests before they can begin surgery. No. Uh, how much do you need? Only three mils, but I'm going to get five. It's a known risk that potassium levels will rise and spike in big cats when they're under anaesthetic. This is a really bad thing if it happens because it will mean that Azuri will suffer from a cardiac arrest. What do you reckon? Have a look. Doing a dental exam on a big cat is one of my favourite things. Their teeth are just incredible. You just see the damage that they could do to you, to an animal, that they're, their prey. And there's just so much power in those muscles and that, that jaw. Beautiful young feet. You feel how tough those pads are. Know, she just... is very young looking, isn't she? Oh, I know. We'll have a check over her whole body, looking for any lumps and bumps. A general physical exam is vital at this point to ensure she doesn't have any health issues. I'm looking at her ears. It's all looking really good at the moment. There's nothing I need to clean out, so um, we'll leave that at that. The last blood sample is taken and Azuri's physical examination is complete. Schlubby your nursey. Just doing a surgical scrub before we surgically remove the implants in Azuri's legs. I'm going to be sterile with this procedure so we don't um, introduce any infection. If the contraceptive implants can be safely removed, Azuri will be able to join the breeding program at the zoo. Implant there underneath her skin, so literally see it and feel it there. And we'll just make, be making an incision around that and, and removing that completely. We're about to start surgery. I'm cutting, yep, first incision. At the Perth Zoo, <laughs> Peter and the team are working to remove contraceptive implants from three-year-old lioness Azuri. They hope she can enter the zoo's breeding program to help preserve this vulnerable species. It's incredibly tough. It's much, much tougher than a domestic cat. These guys are obviously designed to withstand other lions and hyenas biting and, and scratching and those sorts of things. So the skin is, is very different when we're suturing it, placing catheters, giving injections, and you have to have a bit more elbow grease, I think, in there. It's Peter's job to locate and remove the implants that have been preventing Azuri from conceiving. The implant is rather tiny. Um, it's only a couple of centimetres long. Um, there are two of them and they kind of look like a little bit of candy. Just hold on to it. Yeah, that's it. There are two. two I think there's one on top of the other one. Oh, OK. Lovely. And I'm going to steal a swab and get you to give that to me and then I'll have a look at how much we've got there. All right. 
the implants out completely, um, which is good. Um, I've just got to do my skin sutures now, um, and that'll be it. We're going to have to wake Azuri up quickly. For her own safety, we want to get a move on and get her back into her enclosure and get her away from anaesthetic. We've done everything that we're going to be able to do with her now. Until the lioness has been successfully woken, everyone is still on edge. I'll take her off the machine and then we can come out. At the Perth Zoo, Lioness Azuri is returning to her pen after surgery to remove birth control implants. It's been an incredible day. Um, it's an amazing experience to get up and close and personal with a critter like Azuri. And we'll await some results from our tests, but all in all, Azuri's passed with flying colours with her medical exam and I've definitely had a pretty exciting day at work. They're going to pull the stretcher back yeah. That's lovely. That's there a we great go. Head. Yeah. She's now waking up and we're giving her drugs to reverse some of her anaesthetic medications that are going to make her become conscious very quickly. So this is a very risky time. Oh, Zuri, there's an eye. Hello. Oh, there we go. That's a real blink. So she's just um, started to recover. She's stirring, she's moving her head. Her eyes have come um, back to, to normal and she's looking good and most dangerous bits over now. Azuri previously had an implant in to prevent her from breeding at too young of an age. Now that it's been removed, she's gonna be paired with an appropriate male and hopefully has some little line cups. Number two. Hello, Australian Reptile Park. Oh, hi, my name's Jody. I'm wondering if you can help me. Um, we've got a funnel web in our house. I'm home alone with the kids, so I'm not sure if you can come out and... Yeah, help. yeah, yeah, I sure will. Look, don't go near it. If you can keep an eye on it from a distance, that'd be good. I'll be there as soon as I can. OK, thanks. Bye. Bye. Australian Reptile Park Operations Manager Tim Faulkner is on his way to help a family under siege from a funnel web. Australia's deadliest spider. Hello? Funnel web rescue. Oh, Tim, that was quick. <laughs> Hello. Hello, I'm Jody. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. How are you? Good, thank you. Well, not really. We've got a funnel web in the house. Funnel webs kill, and people know that, so it's a little bit terrifying when you've got one in your backyard, let alone in your house. Tony, did you see where it went? Um, I think it went under the fridge or behind the CD rack. I don't know how long this spider's been here. Look, I've got goosebumps. It really, it's quite scary, actually. What did it look like? It was big and black. You're pretty brave in here. I can notice you got I'm, your feet up. I'm up now. You're up. <laughs> I'm going to have a look. Ooh, I've got the heebie-jeebies. Jody knows firsthand how dangerous these spiders can be. My husband stomped on one and killed it. And it actually um, didn't bite him at all, but within an hour he was sweating and he was green. And, oh, it just gives me the goosebumps because he was so unwell. Mm. There's one part there I can't see behind. Be careful. <sighs> Is it there? Not yet. We should be able to find him. Tim is continuing his search for a lethal funnel web spider. The intruder is terrifying Jody and her two daughters. Any dark corner is where he's going to be because it's daylight now, they're nocturnal, so it's all the dark spots that I look. Watch out, Tim, it doesn't jump out and get you. <laughs> if he's not under the fridge or cupboard, perhaps he's behind the fish tank. As soon as it rains and it's cool, the, the males go out for females. That's the signal. It's cool, get out, they're not going to dry out. It's been 30 minutes since Tim's search began. I see him. Finally, he spots the deadly spider. He's in here. <sighs> Be careful. I'm always aware of the fact that you can't get complacent. I always like to remind myself, if I was a carpenter, sooner or later I'm going to hit myself on the finger with a hammer. That can't happen with a funnel web spider. You're dead. At the moment, he thinks he's hidden. So he's just sitting there, crouched. But what we'll expect here in a second is, and why they're famous, as soon as I move this, he's gonna rear up, put his fangs up, droplets of venom on the end, ready to bite. Come on, mate. 
Oh, see, that he just bit the tongs. And I can actually feel that fang, ting, it hits. That's an incredible amount of force for a tiny little spider. If I slip a finger too close for just a split second, bang, he'll bite. Come on, little buddy. In you go. Good spider. There we go. Look at that. That's definitely a Sydney funnel web spider and a male. I can tell that's a male by the size. Female funnel webs, they're bigger, they look scarier, but in fact it's this little male that is the, the dangerous spider, five times more toxic than the female. There he is. Thank you so much. That's okay. For catching our little friend. Thank gosh that Tim was able to locate the funnel web. I'm really relieved. I was so concerned for the children after what had happened to my husband a few years ago. Finding another one in the house was quite frightening. He's scary. I don't like his fangs. I think they're all going to sleep easy tonight knowing that spider's with me. And we can take him back now and save some lives. That's excellent. This is only the beginning for the spider because now really he goes into a luxurious resort, he gets his self-contained little cabin, he gets a cricket once a week, and we get to milk him and extract that venom that saves lives. Tim has removed a male funnel web spider from inside a family home. Now the real work for this spider begins. First trick's catching them, but it's another thing milking. There's a good boy. It's nothing like milking a cow. <laughs> We actually want him aggressive at this point. We need to tease him gently. We need him to stand up, rear up like that aggressively. And there we go, two droplets of venom. One, two, there it is. It can take up to a thousand milkings to make one ampule of antivenom. When you're bitten by a funnel web spider, you know about it. Before the venom even kicks in, their fangs are half a centimetre long and they thrust them into your flesh and you'll know I've been bitten. Here we go. Two droplets of venom. One, two. Back at the Australian Reptile Park, Tim is finishing one of the world's most dangerous jobs, milking a lethal funnel web spider. Now this is our little mate here and he looks pretty vicious. He's a male, but have a look at a female. They are scared. Whoa, look at that. I wouldn't be surprised if those fangs had almost go through plastic. Female's almost twice the size. Look at that. She's like some kind of kung fu funnel whip. Look at these two spiders. Both of them are just there, fangs reared at me. You know, I'm saying, it's all right, guys. I'm finished. Look at it. <laughs> Have a look at them. Settle down. Who would I rather be, a female or male funnel web? Female's twice the size. Male's five times more toxic, but the female eats him after they mate. I don't know. Flush it out. Our biggest problem with the funnel web program is access to funnel webs. We need community support. We need people to tell us, I have a funnel web. We collect those spiders, milk them, save lives. I've got a little reward for you. That is one hungry spider. And this week's number one. The idea is that she's gonna thrash around, she'll build up like a gator. At the Australian Reptile Park, operations manager Tim Faulkner and his staff are preparing for an extremely dangerous capture. Well, let's um, be safe and... OK, we'll meet you around the front, guys. The park's keepers have recently noticed Atomic Betty, a massive reticulated python, has a large lump on her back. Tim must catch her to have a closer look at the worrying growth. There is no easy way to catch Atomic Betty. You'll know Three, what you need. Two, two, one. Up. Good boy. In. Get yeah, that collar off. Good, Head up. Good, good. Head up. Everyone grab on, feed her out, feed her out, feed her out. Atomic Betty is a member of the largest python species on Earth. Now, at her size, a bite, teeth are a centimetre long, serious cuts, and if she gets a coil around you, you'll hear ribs pop. Watch that head, mate. After a tense struggle, they've managed to capture the massive six and a half metre python. Okay, so bring that bag in. Tail's gonna go in first. 
Start to bring the bag a bit closer, guys. Three, two, one, go. Beauty. Now wrap her up. Atomic Betty is one of the Reptile Park favourites. To think that something's wrong with her, well, I don't like it, and it really worries me. Excuse us, guys. Cheers, thank you. Atomic Betty is being moved to a safe area for examination. Tim is aware the python is now extremely agitated and will be ready to strike when the opportunity presents itself. The first year I ever caught her, I went in and I was about a metre away and she just launched at me. And she got a couple of teeth through one of the keeper's nails and it was horrible, blood everywhere. So we always have to be aware of that and manage her very, very safely. Okay, now there's only four of us, so let's go up and out. You're good, mate. Just watch it. Whoa, 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 look at that. You got her, mate? Yep, Just yep. take her over to your left there. Yeah, Ike, we can go yep. down so she's on the ground. Okay, that's nice, so I'll look at it. Yeah. Okay, so that's pretty serious. Yeah. I'm really worried about that, mate. I can see that and feel that there's bone. I mean, and it's raised, so she needs to go to the vet. All right, guys, let's get her back in now, softly, gently. Because she's going to go. Oh, no. We're good. That's almost in. You two boys on the head? Yep. Atomic Betty's never been to the vets before. She's not the type of animal that we'd take off site and get out in a vet clinic, but, you know, this is serious enough that I need to do it. Yeah. Hey. Okay. That's good. She's good. What I really don't want is bad news. Atomic Betty is a beautiful big snake. I mean, surgery would be just a nightmare. Afternoon, Timmy. How are you? Good, thanks, mate. How are you? What's happening? Near the Reptile Park in Wyoming, Tim and the team have arrived at the Green Cross Vets Clinic with Atomic Betty. I hope you got it. Yep, got it. The 11-year-old python has a large lump on her back. Tim is hoping Dr. Peter Nosworthy can determine what's causing the massive swelling. So we're mid-back with this. Do we have to yep. get her all the way out, do you uh, think? I think she'll be better up there because it's just better for us with restraint. Okay. Now, keep coming a little. Here we go. It comes up now, Pete. That's it. So once that's flat, let's keep her there. She got a bony bump. What is it? Oh, what's well, bone? Well and truly. What's your first? Listen. Oh, well, first impression's a worry. Touching Betty's lump, I'm concerned that she suffered a fractured vertebrae in her back and that there's the potential to her to be uh, paralysed from that point backwards. We need to have a look at the spine to see whether we've got a straight line vertebrae for a start, that there's no disarticulation. Yes. Uh, appreciate that uh, uh, if that's the case, then we've got impingement on the, uh, on the cord. Yes. Uh, and from there backwards, we're going to have nerve issues. So what are we going to do now? Yeah, I want to take an x-ray, if okay. that's all right with yeah, you guys. Yeah, sure. We might just carry you through while she's out. Yeah, if you're, okay. if you're up for that, that's yep. good. Right, we've got the way back here. I'm really nervous, my stomach's in knots, and that's because the worst case could unfold. Bit more, Mickey, a little bit more, mate. Okay, that's us, yep, we're good there. But if these results are bad, and she has a broken back, that could end in paralysis, and that's the end of Betty. We don't want that to happen. X-rays happening, guys. One, two, go. Hey, do you want us to turn her a little? Yeah. Atomic Betty's x-rays are underway. Okay, good. She's done? She's done. The six and a half metre reticulated python has a worrying lump on her back. Tim's concerned Betty might have broken her spine. Atomic Betty's a really important part of the Australian Reptile Park. She is so loved that for anything to be wrong would be horrible. Uh, we, we haven't got a lot to smile about, Tim. She has a crack in a vertebrae. Okay. Okay, you can see this is bone. Yep. Uh, that bone should be sitting low. You can see how the, the vertebrae come up there. That should be sitting. Same as this, they're all sitting next door to each other. Yep. The one's sitting up in the air. Yep. Which means that we have got some pressure on the underside of the spinal cord. So, Pete, now, are we still looking at a real risk of paralysis? Oh, without a doubt, yeah. We are looking at a risk of paralysis. If it's left to its own devices, it's left calm, quiet, it may well cement up beautifully. Yep. Um, yeah, and that's like having a fused joint then. Yep. Uh, that would be what we're after. Yep. 
but it will take six months for the bones to heal and the team will have to follow very strict instructions so the python isn't paralysed. No climbing, rest, small meals and the pain relieving drugs. Well, I'm not sure whether that's good news or bad news. I guess it could have been worse. It could have been a lot worse. It could have been worse. I'm really happy that we brought her here today because until we got those x-rays, we couldn't know the severity of the injury. So, you know, we could have been on the knife's edge where she was about to become paralysed and maybe by not feeding her big items now and the couple of things we're going to implement, we saved her. OK, let's go. A bit slower when you get to the bottom there, boys. At the Australian Reptile Park, Tim and the keepers are carefully returning Atomic Betty to her enclosure. She's heavy. The six and a half metre python will need to be handled with care to avoid any more damage to her fractured spine. It's been a big day for Betty and keepers, but now we know what's wrong with the lump, we know what we've got to do to fix it. Betty needs to get back into her enclosure and just settle down, she needs some rest. Okay, that's it. All right, Betty. I think at least for another year, she doesn't need to be handled. Uh, we'll reduce the food items, so hopefully that's enough to get her through. Righto, darling. All you gotta do is get better now. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way, that way.